take my glasses off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what impressed you about how you guys played in those close sets in this match? Yeah, I mean, I'm always impressed by this team, but I think that's something that we've been working on. And one thing that we've talked a lot about as a team is just like being each other's biggest cheerleaders and being great teammates and coming into tonight tonight we knew that FRS like our failure recovery system moving on was going to be a key component of tonight's match they're a great team they have great players we knew they were going to score and so for us it was going to be how quickly can we bounce back and can we move on when they do make those plays and I think that's what I'm most proud of is I think throughout the entire match if they did something good we were like okay they're great players we're going to do something good right back so I think that was the difference in tonight and that's what I'm most proud of. Yeah. What was that acronym again you said? FRS. FRS. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> how difficult was it to run points? Because I think, I mean, both teams side out 64, 76. But how difficult was it to run points tonight? Yeah, I mean, it was very difficult. They're a good team, but ultimately that's what we're going to see at the end of the season. And so for us, it's just continuing to learn how we can score and how we can create because that's what it'll be like in December. So for us, it's just figuring out how to learn from each and every game, whether it's a win or a loss. Rebecca, I mean, they run pretty quick offense. Mm -hmm. What was the challenge for you to kind of get hands up, up against that? I mean, it was exactly that. It was just a challenge. I think, you know, being a middle blocker, the expectations that were always there and we're trying to block balls. But I me mean, personally, when I'm defending a really fast uh, offense, I my biggest thing is just trying to touch the ball and slow it down. Because if the expectation is for me to make this massive move every time, I'm going to be late and I'll be causing problems. I'll be reaching when I shouldn't. And so. Yeah, you know, we resort back to our training just like with their quick footwork. Um, but yeah, it's just keeping your composure and just trying to uh, slow them down. Or are you able as a team to kind of adjust to that as the match went on? They're hitting drop significantly each set. Yeah, I think so. I feel like we recognized it that, um, well, number four, she was causing problems. She was moving the ball a lot. And so, again, we just talked about it, talked through the play. I remember Merritt just talked about slowing them down. And the, that looks like touching the ball, digging it high. Just what does slowing the game down look like on our side when they do have a fast offense? Mara, what changed for you after the first set? Three, three kills in the first set, seven in the second going on from there. What changed for you or what did Arizona State do differently that you were able to go off? I mean, it, it helps. It makes my job really easy when I have two middle blockers that kill a lot of balls because um, that creates a lot of space for me. So, I mean, a lot of credit to those two because they're middle scheme a lot and they're in a lot of different like situations and scenarios so I just knew coming into tonight that I was going to have a lot of space and so when I had that opportunity I needed to capitalize on it but I think as a team what was really good attacking wise was we were just being creative and we knew that we were going to have to find ways to get kills and I think that's what we did tonight. Mm -hmm. Rebecca what kind of challenge do you think you and Andy as a tandem provide for other teams with your different skill sets? Uh, I think we move the ball really well I mean we know how to hit the ball hard but you know, that's not good enough when you play at this level, especially not in our gym alone. I mean, I would argue that our own Husker game days that we have, aka scrimmage days, like that's hard. And, you know, you have girls that you've been playing with for a long time, so they know uh, your tendencies and stuff like that. But I think what makes me and Andy so difficult to defend is how well we move the ball, but also um, add heat to it. So. Your word against Jeter had seven kills, no errors. She hasn't committed a hitting error this season. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, how, how impressive is that to you? It's incredibly impressive. I'm going to be so honest. Andy, Andy and I were talking about it, and we were just like, okay, like, you know, we're on a mission tonight. We want to we wanna make, we want to be her heir. And she didn't do that. Like, that just didn't happen. I mean, and we were like, we just have to give her credit, you know, where credit's due. She's an intelligent attacker, a very talented volleyball player. She sees the block in the court mm -hmm. so well. And I think what blew me away the most was um, she knew when to take risks. So... She wasn't just blindly swinging because she thought she saw space. She was acting purely off of what she saw. And, I mean, that's everything you want to be as a middle attacker just because our margin for error is so small and typically middles don't get a lot of sets, but she capitalizes every time she gets a set. So total kudos, kudos. to her. Yeah, yeah, major kudos. Not looking too far ahead, but to that game next Sunday, it's going to be on ABC. As you guys reflect on your time in this program, everything that you guys have done really for not just volleyball, but women's sports, how excited are you guys for that? Yeah. Incredibly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a huge opportunity, and for us, it's just, it's another game, and I'm sure that's exactly how we'll treat it going in, but like you said, it's 
we're continuing to see stepping stones happen in women's sports and women's athletics. So it's really exciting that we're able to be a part of something else. And I know that our team doesn't take that lightly and we're very grateful to be in the situations that we're in and we're grateful that we're the people that are in that position. But I mean, as for the game, it'll just be another game for us. Exactly, yeah. Mary, you kind of had a slow start to the season. Do you feel like you're finally getting back to where you want to, just rhythm physically, and just feel like, feel like you're back to where mm -hmm. you want to be? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, a little rough start to the season, but that's okay. I mean, my teammates were great, my coaches were great, and we just had to figure it out there for a little bit. Like I said last time I was sitting in this chair, sometimes you have to take a step backwards to go forward two steps. And so I think it, without them and without my coaches, it probably would have lasted a lot longer. But um, yeah, definitely feeling back into rhythm and connecting with Bergen and making sure that I'm being creative definitely feels like merit. <laughs> I want to add um, that Mary is an incredibly hard worker, and she already Thank holds you. herself to such a high standard. And so, coach is constantly giving her stuff. I mean, she was a first-team All-American last season, and so, like she said, sometimes you're gonna have to take two steps backwards because she's constantly having to figure out, okay, one, how do I get back to being on that top team, being All-American all over again? And so, I feel like even just to describe her not being at her game, she still was capitalizing, whether it was communication, blocking, like, it may not have been seen through attacks, but she was covering the court in every other way. So, just want to add that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, you guys are almost hitting 300 this year. <coughs> what can you say about Bergen and how she's kept this offense balanced and really got the middles involved? Um, I just think it's a lot of communication because, you know, it's just – Feeling out the court, we're in preseason. Again, we're all working on different things, trying to figure out how can we be better than last year so that we can finish in that final match. Um, and I think just the biggest thing was uh, staying off the net and create, like allowing space to be there. And just, um, yeah, the biggest thing is just communication because if she, you know, there's so much going on, especially in transition, that if she can't hear us, it's a lot harder to find us. Final questions? Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.